Cornwall, the most southerly point of the UK, known for its spectacular coastline surrounded by open ocean. It's here that dedicated organisations are fighting to protect one of Britain's most iconic species. Around the UK coastline during our winter months, one of our much loved marine mammals hauls out onto beaches to give birth. Now these beaches are of vital importance because the UK is home to nearly half the world's population of this species, and that is the grey seal. The grey seal is one of the rarest seal species on Earth, and the UK has a globally important population. They're known to have exceptional senses, such as eyesight, hearing, and highly sensitive whiskers, which they use to detect movements underwater, but also communicate with. Much like the human fingerprint, they have unique fur patterns, which they will have for their entire lives. Sadly, this charismatic species is under increasing pressure from human impact. We've travelled to Cornwall to meet Dan Jarvis from British Divers Marine Life Rescue, an organisation that works hard to protect marine mammals across the UK. We have volunteers who are trained all the way around the country who are available to respond to seals who are called into our hotline that may or may not need our help. We deal with a number of animals that have various injuries and illnesses as well, but also a few that are entangled too. When we locate the seal on the beat, we'll usually monitor it first, do things like breathing rate before we actually start handling the animal and disturbing it. If we can see there's a problem with the animal, we'll go hands-on with it with a towel, restrain it safely so that we can handle the animal, take a temperature, check for any injuries or signs of infections, things like that. We can pop it into our seal bag as well and weigh it so we can get an accurate measurement of that. And based on its age, that might also tell us whether it's severely malnourished, for example, or if it's okay. And we can also tube feed it as well, give it some rehydration fluids. Some of the animals that we come across are quite dehydrated and skinny and really exhausted as well. So to have that early perk up before we take it into a rehabilitation center really can help while they're in transport. We're seeing more animals from entanglement as well. There's more, again, public awareness of the issue and more people reporting it when they see it. Sometimes it's a case of seeing an animal that is completely inaccessible, unfortunately, and we can't actually get to it. It's down a big cliff, but sometimes they do come up onto beaches that are accessible. When seals cannot be immediately released back into the water and are in need of further medical treatment, they are taken to rehabilitation centres. So we visited the Cornish Seal Sanctuary in Gweek to find out more about the rehabilitation process. We joined Megan Gunnell, an animal care worker at the sanctuary, to have a closer look at the work they do. Can you tell us a little bit about Joker's story and how he got brought into you? Yeah, so um, like most of the pups that we get, it's a member of the public that spotted them and then we either get a call or British Divers Marine Life Rescue get a call. In this case, it was their volunteers who were actually able to get down to him on Little Feastral Beach in Newquay. They got there really, really quickly and it's really important in a net entangled seal case, which is what Joker was, to actually get there as fast as possible because you don't want them to actually go back in the water. Once they're back in the water, you can't really do a lot. For the grey seals, they are a globally rare species, even though they do have quite a big population down in Cornwall and in the UK. We feel like the conservation effort for them is to actually just let them have a natural life without being interfered from marine um, litter, um, from public disturbance, and just generally not getting in their way. When we first get a pup in, we do a thorough check of everything, so nose to flipper, and at that point we sort of make a note of where its injuries are, and then at least once a day, usually twice, depending on the severity of the wounds, we will clean them. And this is a really important process because it lets us know, well, so every day we're checking them and we're seeing if actually the treatment is working, because a lot of the time they're infected, and we need to sort of clean them out so that they can heal properly. So we just look to see if the treatment needs to carry on, if we need to call our vet and change anything. 
When a seal requires additional medical care, such as wound cleaning, Megan is accompanied by Zoe Morris, an animal care assistant, ensuring the process is as efficient and quick as possible. Once seals are past the critical stage, they are moved to a separate part of the hospital where they are monitored and fed a strict diet to ensure that they get back up to a healthy weight. So we have to um, move our boots because we're actually going into a hospital area now. And this is just to stop any pathogens getting in that shouldn't be there for the seals and in case it's spreading disease. The rehabilitation process is a round-the-clock operation. Each year the sanctuary brings in between 50 to 80 pups. And with a wide range of issues from entanglement to malnourishment, the expertise and experience of the team give the seals the best possible chance of being released back into the wild. Later that day we received an urgent call from Dan with the reported seal stranded on a nearby beach. So we jumped in the car to join the team of marine medics at the scene. So a rescue's just come in and we're here with the marine medics now and we're going to go and see how it's doing. It's just up here. The first thing that happens in a rescue is Dan will do what is called jumping the seal, placing a towel over its eyes, making the process as least stressful as possible for the seal. They will then perform a full health check, checking the seal's temperature and looking for any visible wounds or injuries. The team found this seal to be dehydrated and the quickest way to get fluids into its system is by tube feeding. The marine medics worked quickly and efficiently to complete all of the necessary procedures and then make a welcoming decision. So thankfully there doesn't seem to be anything wrong, well, wrong enough to take the seal into a rehab centre. So the team are going to release it back out onto the beach now and hopefully she goes straight back into the water. The seal is moved quickly to the far end of the beach, away from the public and close enough to the water, giving it the option to go back into the ocean if it decides to. The seal is carefully placed down on the beach and after unzipping the bag, the medics immediately give it a wide berth. And, after having a look at its surroundings, this young seal instantly heads to the shoreline, swimming back out into the open ocean, giving the entire team a successful and happy ending. Thankfully, this female seal went straight back into the water after being in the bag and having a full health check. And not all stories end like this, but it just goes to show the importance of what people are doing around the Cornish coast to help protect seals and getting animals back into the wild where they belong. Thanks to UK-wide organisations and committed individuals, the UK continues to play a vital part in taking care of the globally important population of grey seals. With their steadfast approach of rehabilitating and releasing these animals, the UK will continue to play a crucial role in grey seal conservation.